Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me this week in our podcast studios is Dr. Babatope Akiyeme. Uh, Dr. Akiyeme is a research associate at Michigan State University and is a social scientist um, with experience in ag economics. And uh, he's here to talk to us a little bit today about precision livestock farming. But before we get started with that, Babatope, why don't you give everybody a little bit of background about yourself? Um, I know you've got kind of a, a non-traditional education as we think about uh, swine research and stuff, but tell us a little bit about uh, what you do and what your area of expertise is. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Clayton Johnson. As, as you have rightly said, my name is Dr. Babatokwe Akiyemi, and I'm a research associate with Michigan State University. My work focuses on understanding precision livestock farming adoption within the U.S. swine industry. Mainly, I'm not um, a veterinarian or animal scientist. I'm a social scientist, like you rightly said. And my first degree, second degree, and third degree is in agricultural economics. So mainly, I speak with key stakeholders within the swine industry, stakeholders such as swine producers, farmers, veterinarians, and I also speak with consumers to know their perceptions and attitude towards uh, the adoption of precision livestock farming technology. You said something, uh, Baba Tobe, in our, our kind of intro discussion that's going to stick with me for a long time. You said you work with humans who work with pigs. And, and your ultimate goal is to try and figure out kind of the barriers towards precision livestock adoption. Um, talk to us a little bit about the potential barriers that have come up, right? Um, what, what are the barriers that you've been trying to look at as you, talk to, as you talk to the humans who care for the pigs? What are the things you're asking them about? Thank you so much. In fact, um, that is one of the, the issue of the barriers is one of the key thing our funders are very, very interested in. So we do have some preliminary results. We have conducted some preliminary studies that is giving us an insight into some of these, um, of these um, hindrances or barriers to the adoption of precision livestock farming technology. One that is very prominent is the EU of internet on the swine farms. Most of the precision livestock farming technologies that we are working with, they do require internet. Of course, there are some, um, there are some precision livestock farming technologies that are in-house that also require internet, but most of them do require internet. And one thing we are discovering is that on the countryside, where many of these farms are located, issue of internet can be a challenge. And when I talk about internet, it's internet, it's not the lack of it. It's about the strength of the signals to be able to collect those information from the from the peaks, which could be those information could be in form of images, through camera, sound, through microphone, and sending those inf- data to the cloud it can be very, very challenging. That is one. And another major um, challenge that we are currently also um, investigating is the integration of this technology across, because many of these technologies, they are from different vendors and they do not speak with each other. So it can be very, very challenging to, users of this technology at times do get overwhelmed with the amount of, share amount of data that is coming from different vendors and they are not speaking to one another. Another challenge that we are also dealing with is the issue of the ownership of PLF data. Um, some of them, um, some will tell you that the data belongs to the, uh, to the farmers. Some will tell you it belongs to the vendors. Some will tell you any data collected from the pigs belongs to the farmers, but the algorithms 
processing this data belongs to the vendor. So we do have this ownership conflict it used to. So this, there are other ones, but these are the major ones that we are currently looking at. I know, Baba Tope, you um, are looking at consumers as part of your survey work. What do consumers want from precision livestock farming? Do they just want the pig's life to be better? Do they want us to use tools to make the pig's life better? Or do they want validation that the pig had a good life? Or do they just want transparency? Do they just want to know where their food come from or, or some of all of it? Um, all the factors you have mentioned, they are very, very, they are one of the things we are current that are gradually coming out from what we are what we are learning from consumers. Um, for, for instance, we we are gradually seeing that um, one of the major issues currently is about certification of animal welfare. Uh, there are organizations in US, in Europe, like certified humans, like all the um, certification organizations that certify animal welfare and put their labels. One of the major issues that consumers are currently dealing with is the issue of traceability and transparency. Um, transparency in the sense that if they wanted to know, if, if they are going to be paying for an animal welfare label claim, they want to be able to ascertain that those claims were actually true in the sense that if you claim that these pigs live a happy, happy life, so if there is a way they can independently verify those claims, they said it's something that will be of very, is of interest to them. And of course, some of these things are very, they are very complex. And some of them are not something that ordinarily can be achieved. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data, and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure, light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at HealthyClimateMonitor.com. For the, for the section of the market that maybe we can appease or the section of the market that is um, interested in like your blockchain approach for the traceability, um, did you find that consumers would be willing to pay for that sort of transparency? Is that one of the things that pops out in your research as a, as a shared value enough that the consumers are willing to pay a premium for pork that is produced with that capability? Um, currently, we are not yet there. That is the last objective of our work. We are currently in the process of developing um, survey tool called Estonia that we are going to use to elicit the willingness to pay of consumers. But as a, as a precursor to that, we have conducted a kind of pilot survey with some, some section of the market. Uh, no, not, sec not, not pilot survey, a kind of interviews to really identify because the kind of willingness to pay method we are using is called choice experiment, whereby we have um, attributes of precision livestock farming we think individuals would be willing to pay for. So what we are seeing currently is that the market may be there, but we don't know the size. We know what we know currently is that there are people that care about animals. And there are people that may be willing to pay premium. But we don't know if the market is substantial. Yeah, so that's we cannot say until we complete our our study. Very good. Anything uh, demographic information in terms of age or background, geography that you live in that, that seems to steer consumers with their responses one way or the other? Is a certain type of consumer more willing to pay for some of the welfare attributes? Can we use demographic information to help estimate maybe the potential size of the producers willing to pay for some of that stuff? Um, unfortunately, the answer is still 
I don't have a ready answer for that. But one, one thing that I do know from previous, this is not from our studies, from previous studies on new market like this, is that the literature suggests that the Gen Z, the younger generations are more, they are more likely to be willing to pay for some of these um, kind of new products. And also there are some, that does not necessarily mean that the older generation are averse to it. But um, what we have seen so far is that the demography tends to be young, educated, and um, they are also high income individuals. So these three demographics are what we have seen so far in literature, younger demography, educated, and high income. So those are the main factors from previous literature. That does not necessarily imply that is likely to be the one driving because of the peculiarity and the emotive issues attached to caring for pigs. So we there might be some other um, driving forces that we do not even anticipate that may not even apply to other products that may also drive willingness to pay for for pre PLF adoption within the swine industry. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you very much um, for for sharing that information with us. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. It's been fantastic to talk about not only um, you know your skill set, but how you're applying that to try and help us align goals across the various different stakeholders, from the people that work in the barn to the people that work in the processing of our pigs, all the way to the end consumer. I really appreciate your work and then coming on to talk to us today. Thank you. Yeah. And to our, our audience, thank you very much for listening in. If you haven't checked out our website, please uh, give it a look. Go to swinehealthblackbelt.com. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you, you don't uh, miss not only this one, but all the weekly episodes that we put out. Uh, for Dr. Babatope Akiyembe, I'm Clayton Johnson. We really appreciate you being a part of this episode and please have a great rest of your day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.